Hello friends, Jennifer Pearson here, Thistle, Thistle G -G. <laughs> Oh my goodness, can't even say it. So yes, the Dark Mansion Tarot has arrived, and it is truly luscious. Um, the colors especially are just to die for. Um, and you get, this is the backing that I got. You've, there's a choice currently on the website. Um, I don't think I had ever heard anybody else say that this is a Polish deck. So it is coming from Poland. And it took maybe a full two weeks for it to arrive to me, I think. Um, and so this is an extra card. And there's the publishers, and you can just look them up online, Teroteca. Or maybe it's Teroteca Studio, the Dark Mansion Tarot. Um, but yeah, and you know, the gold is not, it, it's an antique. Um, it's almost a coppery kind of a gold very rich as opposed to glitzy you know so it's not the glitzy gold um, the super yellow glitzy gold that, that is often on decks and it's not at all sticky it's, um, it, you know it almost is as though the you know the gilding uh, the edging had been done separately for each card I'm sure that wasn't the case. I can't imagine that was the case. But, um, you know, it doesn't, there's no sticking together like there can be with some of the mass market decks um, that have gold gilding. So super. It feels good. It's got some drag to it. It's a little. You can you can hear a little noise. It's a little squeaky when you do that, but but it's just too gorgeous. Um, and again, it's the colors. Now, um, so let's just walk through the cards. Otherwise, I'm just going to sit here feeling them. <laughs> um, so yeah, you have the frames. I'm not real keen on clowns, especially as the fool. But again, the colors just suck me into this. Um, and to me, the fact that this fool is looking at us gives it a way different meaning. So, and that, you know, and the dog is holding it back, and that kind of varies from deck to deck <clears throat> what the animal is actually doing. So, normally, right, the fool is stepping off of the cliff in a state of bliss oftentimes um, you know has a flower in his hand and maybe he's looking up at the flower maybe he's smelling the flower but is oblivious to any onlookers this person is thing <laughs> clown is looking directly at us the viewer to me that means that there's that this is like an act of insecurity. The saying, hey, look, I'm going to do this. Look at me. Look at me. Yeah, it's stupid, but I'm going to do it because I want to impress you and I want to show you what, you know, what I'm, you know, what I'm willing to do to get your attention. You know, look at the crow or whatever it is looking at him like, you know what? I think you're headed for trouble, buddy. Um, so yeah, that kind of that fool to me has quite a different meaning. But not too many of the other cards do, if I'm recalling correctly. Excuse me, I have to get in my, my usual yawn. It's not late at all, but heck, the sun is down, and so I have to yawn when I do a video and the sun is down. Um yeah. In fact, it's it's so kind of in line with 
the Rider Waite Smith system, as far as I can see, that even though it being the Dark Mansion Tarot and it's got skeletons and, and stuff like that, it doesn't have a preponderance of them. You know, it does have skeletons in the frame down there on either side of the, the name of the card. Um, <clears throat> but I can easily see this as an everyday, any day, any time deck. Absolutely. In fact, if I'm recalling correctly from my first walkthrough, this could even be a love deck because of the number of instances in which um, the traditional meaning of a card has been altered a little bit to make it more love focused. I think the six of the wands, six of wands is I think one, one card that way. Um, so anyway, the magician. We've got some machinery in there and we've got whatever that wiggly thing is that's coming around there. It could actually just be a cord, but it looks more alive than that. Um, yeah. So it's, and it, it pulls from different Kind of time periods and I would I would even say like genres like if you think in terms of literary genres you know this to me is kind of steampunky um, genre but there there are cards in here that are more like westerns they look like American westerns <laughs> so um, yeah so it's interesting in that respect so I'm going to put her over to the side. This is our High Priestess. And it's interesting to me that the choice was made um, to make her more Christian than she is normally seen with the crosses. So she comes across a little bit more like, almost like headmistress, not even like, um, oh, Now I can't remember what the head nun is in a convent. I can't remember the name of it. In any case, um, not even like that so much as like a headmistress at a school who you have to go to. She doesn't look like she would preach, but that she would talk to you in such a way that you might not ever want to go back. <laughs> you would never want to be in that situation. And I could just see some kids going, oh my God, you had to go see the high priestess. What did she say? <laughs> and it's like, I don't know. She just whispered some things at me. It was so creepy. <laughs> I left. No, um, anyway, and uh, the empress is a glorious empress. She does have some kind of weird, kind of a weird collarbone going on there. But um, other than that, and this card got me thinking a little bit about the fact because she actually has her castle there in the background and so this almost had me thinking uh, a little bit about the oddness of empresses in the tarot deck in that normally we would think of them as like yeah you're going to be in your castle you're not going to be out in the agricultural fields. Um, so yeah. Now, do I know historically, you know, Ceres, Demeter, you know, being um, kind of essentially interwoven into the archetype um, or being the archetype, really? Uh, But I don't think of that Earth Mother as being <clears throat> what we would call in human terms an empress. And then the rather dour-faced emperor. But still looking very regal. <clears throat> so showing some sexy gold here. <laughs> Under his robe. So this was 
something interesting to me. So I was going to hold the high, high priestess apart. So I was looking at this because I watch gender things, you know, I look at that. And so here we have, you know, for one thing, the empress being much younger than the emperor. So there is that. And she also, I mean, she could be in her 40s, but I don't think she's made it to her 50s. And look at this guy. I mean, he's in his 60s or 70s. So it's interesting that the, the men are being depicted as so much older. Um, and so I was also looking at, again, this is more like a, a Marseille deck with the um, papists and the um, and the pope. And so we have more or less their bodies starting at more or less the same level but he ends up you know and this is you know pretty much the same level here but he has so much more on his head almost absurdly so and i'm thinking how artistically did she do that how did she do that well she sunk his head into his body so you see here her shoulders are here and she's got this long neck and her head is up here, whereas his head, which should be up here, is sunk way down into his body. And I do feel like there is some, some significance there. I'm not, I haven't decided what it is, but um, it was an interesting artistic choice. She also has three candles in her little, or excuse me, four candles on her little pomegranate candelabras there, and, or chandeliers, whatever you want to say. And he has three. Um, in his case, maybe to go with these three things on this staff. And I don't know what that's called. Um, yeah, so just some interesting things that I noticed there. Which means this is probably going to be a long video if I don't speed things up. So the lovers, um, not quite traditional. You've got that angel up there who is headed toward, facing towards what looks like the happy couple. Um, but we don't know if he's being fickle. I don't know if he's made a decision. She clearly has made a decision. She's resenting this situation over here. So usually when there's a threesome, the man is a little bit more neutral in the situation as though he's trying to choose between the two women or the woman that is um, kind of outside the couple uh, is like an older woman who is maybe trying to counsel them in terms of, I mean, she could be a matchmaker, but she, it looks more like she's counseling them about, you know, whether their match is perhaps ill-advised or not. So this is a different take where you seem to have a jealous lover here. The chariot. Yeah, I like that chariot card. Even though they're highly stylized horses, they're actually quite a bit better than a lot of horses in tarot decks. It just amazes me how well some of the artists can draw everything else but horses in tarot decks. It's just, it's, a, it's really a source of frustration for me, um, being a horse lover. Strength. I do like the strength card. Um, because it's not completely cozy, like with the woman, you know, holding the, the lion's head. It's, it feels to me like she's saying, um, you could replace this lion with a desk. And she's just looking at somebody like, um, you know, don't cross me. You don't realize it. But this is what I have inside. And it's like she knows she has this power available to her. And all she has to do is look at somebody. You know, it's like, bring it on, bring it on. Because <laughs> I know I have this inside of me. 
And I just don't know who could not love this Hermit card. I mean, that is just fab. Fab, 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 fabulous. I like that he's kind of stepping out onto his balcony. You know, he's not necessarily out in the world, but just love it. Wheel of Fortune. Um, so you have the Wheel of Fortune. So I kind of looked at this stuff down here. So here you have luck in terms of getting something and here you have maybe the seasons of a relationship as the wheel turns you've got another wheel going on right here with the merry-go-round you have the seasons in regards to children um, on the kind of the panel areas of the wheel you've got the elements so it's air fire and water i don't see anything going on in the silhouettes in the people who are in the little, I don't even know what you call those on a, on a Ferris wheel, but um, yeah, the little boats, the little rides. I, I honestly just am totally blanking on that. So beautiful. Um, I like that this is a more modern day type of justice. Um, a more, or I would say, more realistic as opposed to stylized or idealized notion. You know that she's at a recognizable desk with recognizable things that she uses with the gavel, with the gown, with the wig, all of that. I think that's great. The hanged man is what you would expect in a darker deck. In Dracula with his vampire, or his bat companion. Death, um, and everybody remarks about the curiosity of, of this death card. Death is not very active. Um, so I think this takes a little meditating. You know, I don't know if death had to do away with something that he loved. And so that's a possible message here of having to end something that is dear to you, but nonetheless having to end it. Um, temperance. She's in kind of an awkward position. If you look at her legs, it's like, how is she not falling into the water? I'm not getting it. <laughs> Anyway, um, but a beautiful temperance card, a sweet temperance card. And I don't mind cards that replace the iris with the lily or lotus. The devil card. And some people took these um, skeletons as maybe looking um, like children. And, you know, it, it could be, you know, somebody controlling her children. Sorry, my webcam isn't wanting to focus on these cards. But it could just be some distortion there. I mean, I have no problem also seeing them as just plain people. She appears to be enjoying either wine or something less savory. The tower card is really actually kind of cute. <laughs> it's very whimsical and cute. But but one thing that's that I do like about it is you can see the awkwardness of the construction even before um, it was struck down. And it looks like it was something that was just added on to and added on to and added on to without a lot of thought about the stability of the structure overall. And I think that's a perfect to have for the tower. The star card, again, very beautiful. But I do miss the whole, have, you know, pouring out two different jugs. But not enough for to dismay me in, 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 at all. 
So the moon. So I don't know if she's got keys down there on her waist or not. She she has a weird dog. And then there's a wolf in the background. Oh my god, look at that wolf with its glowing eyes. And I, I absolutely love and her head is essentially the moon. Um and you know, which is great too, you know, it's the moon is about your imaginings. What are you seeing? What aren't you seeing? Your illusions. Um, but I love that she's picking up the ri the river. The river becomes a ribbon because again, that's playing with your perceptions. The sun, I I don't. You know, it's doing like an impossible travel discovery. But I do feel it's a shame that it isn't the actual sun. Uh, that, that one's a disappointment. Not enough for me to in any way disengage with the deck, but yeah. Um... Yeah, it's a, it's a, I mean, to me, it's just a, a beautiful, lush, again, another, to me, it strikes me as highly usable deck. Um, so judgment. This is reminding me of, I'm not going to remember which one I Oh, it might be the Ghosts and Spirits Tarot. They have the dance, the dance macabre, and I don't know if they have that for judgment, but it might be in the Wheel of Fortune. But yes, the, the dead coming out to dance. And they're skeletons now. There's no pretending that they're coming back as they were. <laughs> they're coming back as something different. <laughs> so... I think that's an interesting take on it. You know, when you rise from the dead, you're not rising with flesh on your bones. No, you might still be, be joyful, but uh, <laughs> you're you're down to the bare bones as you as you return. This is an interesting idea. We'll see. Um, the earth as a beach ball. And the world's card as a beach babe, the woman as a beach babe, even though it doesn't look like she's on the beach, it looks like she's on grass. And then I think these things here are just totally whimsical and crack me up. That lion and the bull just crack me up. Too funny. The ace of wands. And all of the aces, I believe all of them, have, instead of the hand coming out of the cloud um, they have something it's a monument it's like a monument lifting up the element and so each the element is actually grounded two of wands stretch between two things three of wands hailing the taxi um, or stagecoach or carriage, whichever. Four of Wands. So the Four of Wands has become um, a lover's picnic. That's what it looks like. Which isn't what how I would take uh, the Four of Wands. Would definitely have more people and be a more of a social gathering. Five of Wands. Here's the part that to me looks like the Wild West. Except maybe that lamppost. Maybe not so much. And the top hats, maybe not so much. So maybe it's my own biases are just coming in here and it's really something completely different. <laughs> um, but very appropriate depiction for them. So yeah, so here's the six of wands. That and and I can, what I see this as actually is being more female focused. So normally our six of wands, what we have is a victory. 
is a warrior's, what looks to be like a warrior's victory, where the hero is um, parading through the streets and his male comrades are, are hailing him as a hero. And here, the focus has shifted onto a female ceremony and supposedly a female victory having won her man and you have mostly but not solely female celebrants so that's a different twist but those two cards that four and, and the six of wands are um, part of the reason and i'm not sure that there are too many others that make me think of this as being uh, a little more or, or leaning a little bit toward being a love deck. Seven of Wands. Pretty traditional. Eight of Wands. Much fun here. Love it. Delivery coming through at high speed. Um, nine of Wands. So he's not the wounded warrior. So we're not we're not getting that. We're getting somebody who's guarding what he has created or established. And I get that too. The Ten of Wands is quite traditional, except that he's you know, he's carrying the burden in a more sensible way. And there's a little owl watching him carry. And to me, the city looks considerably farther away than in a traditional card. The Page of Wands. I don't know if he's too... He looks like too much of a dandy to knock in on the noggin with the, with the wand, but... Knight of Wands, dashing in. He even has this pyramid in the background. Lawrence of Arabia. Queen of Wands. Very fiery. King of Wands. Yeah. Kind of amusing, <laughs> his expression. Um, he's, he's looking a little cranky today, but that's all right. Ace of Cups, and again, you have the kind of monument style pedestal there. Very beautiful. And it's clearly in a marshy garden with a, a dragonfly instead of doves. But here we have the Two of Cups. Very sweet with little doves or lovebirds up there and even a couple of worms there. Which, if anybody is familiar with, I'm not going to quote, and I, and I couldn't, but uh, without looking it up. <laughs> but I'm going to spoil this card for you a little bit. It looks like those are worms were eyeing each other in love. But um, William Blake has a, I'm pretty sure it's William Blake, has a poem that that treats the worm in the apple as venereal disease. Yeah. It's a sexually transmitted disease. <laughs> so, so for me personally, this, this is always going to have a potentially negative, potentially positive, potentially negative um, connotation here, cautionary aspect to the card. But again, that may not at all be the intention of the deck creator. That's just going to be part of my association with the card. The Three of Cups. This is another one where I think adding somebody, assuming that that's somebody of the opposite gender, it is androgy androgynous enough that it might not be. 
It might be a woman dressed in male clothing. But, you know, if this is the introduction of a male figure into the Three of Cups, then again, I see it as potential, two women potentially attempting to get the attention of a man. The Four of Cups, pretty traditional. Five of Cups, mostly traditional, except she does have one cup on the table that's upright and then one on the floor that's upright. And I like how they've retained some of the traditional card in the background through the window. I think a great Six of Cups. Um, you know, about reminiscing things, and I think those are supposed to be forget-me-nots. I'm not sure what the flowers are supposed to be in the window there, uh, or out on the balcony, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. There's some creepy cards back there. <laughs> Cute Seven of Cups. I love the person. It's like, what is it? That's not the Kilroy was here. What is um Anyway, somebody peeking out of the cup. The ghost. The snake. <laughs> oh, it's too cute. Anyway, very cute. Eight of Cups. It looks like she uh, was dropped, maybe by a boat, and she's continuing her journey. Nine of Cups, very um, self-satisfied, self-important kind of a person there. Kind of amusing way to get the Ten Cups in there is ornamentation on a, a parasol. Yeah. Definitely has the family with the addition of a dog, which isn't traditional in the, in the Ten of Cups. Page of Cups without the fish coming out of the cup, which works for me. And some, some goggly-eyed seagulls in the background. Knight of Cups. So he looks like a, an admiral. Uh, of a warship or something, and his horse is heading out into the water, and so that's kind of interesting too. The queen, I love the pearls. There's there are pearls on both hers and the guys, and again, quite the age difference here. So yeah, queen of cups. She's got a mermaid. Yes on her. There she is in all her glory. King of Cups. Oh, come on. I'm not going to see his, his raiment there. A little bit. There we go. I should look. I'm going to look here. So these two are, whoops, where'd she go? If they come up, like this, they're going to be facing each other or facing away. So now I'm just curious um, with the wands, are they also positional? Oh, she's looking directly at you as is traditional, but he's looking, well, He's positioned a little bit like this, but he's giving you the eye. <laughs> and we have one knight going in one direction, and this knight going in the other direction. So we've got knights that are countering each other. So I'm going to try to watch that as we go on. Maybe I'll keep them. Maybe I'll seek them out like that. I can compare as we go through. Ace of Swords. Yep. Again, 
very traditional, more elaborate crown, I think, than a lot, a lot of them have. A little bit different in that she's, she looks more like she's considering. There's um, no defensive aspect once you put those on the table that you lose that sense of, you know, the crossed arms potentially um, being a matter of protection. Um, what a marvelous, unique way of getting across the idea of the Three of Swords without having a gory heart. So kudos on that one. Four of Swords, seeking sanctuary. Five of Swords, this one's a little more gruesome. It's like how many people can he stab in the back? Almost less a, a thief than a, a bandit, or just somebody who isn't capable of um, addressing something directly, like Mr. Passive Aggressive here or something. Um, you know, and he's got the dark cloud. So I have to say that that. Um, you know, nothing wrong with this card. It will have its own meaning when it comes up. But I tend to prefer the Rider Waite Smith because I can just get all kinds of interpretations out of the Seven of Swords. To me, it isn't just about thieving. So, just saying that. And a lot of decks reduce it to that kind of thing. Six of Swords. This, I think, is having the swords actually be something that you're passing as you leave I think is an interesting idea instead of something that they're taking with them I think that does um, make a difference and then changing the perspective so that we're seeing the front of them and not where they're headed also changes the situation. His face is really quite funny. <laughs> but anyway, and I like that, that there is a humorous, whimsical aspect to you. Oh, now what? Oh, Jennifer, I was just totally getting off track. I was thinking this was the seven, it's the five. Hello. Um, and probably I was thinking that because he does have that thing on him. Whereas, I can make the same sort of complaint here because he is still reduced to the thief. But it looks like he must be being stabbed in the back by at least one of those swords. <laughs> or I don't know where it's going. Look at... Um, this sword coming down right here. It's got to be quite a pain in his shoulder. But traditional in it, he's got a hold of five and he's leaving two behind. So we, we've still got the numerology there. The eight, and I think this is a really interesting take on it, that she's you know, that it's the winter and it's her gown that's staked out. And so if she wants to move, she's going to have to rip her gown. So what's more important, your overall safety or the gown? The Nine of Swords, very traditional here. I do, you know, traditional meaning, I do love a shadow. You know, putting, putting the swords as teeth in a shadow animal is, is pretty darn brilliant. Ten of swords. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, how is that? Maybe it's supposed to be his, his coattails are making these. Anyway. Over and done with. Page of Swords. Yeah, he looks a little snotty. He looks a little 
अस्तु Knight of Swords looks quite full of himself. Queen of Swords looks extremely regal and appropriately unapproachable. King of Swords is the, the kings thus far. Well, no, not the King of Cups. But these two kings, a kind of very manly man, kind of, in a, almost a Disney-esque kind of a way. Um, but yeah, a great king of swords, I think. And these, this here, what is that reminding me of? Is that, um, is it some cathedral in Spain or something? Somebody who's more familiar with cathedrals in Europe. What is this reminiscent of the, I don't know that you call them spinels on a throne or what you call them. Okay, so if we're at this, these two are both looking directly at you, which is, this is different from a traditional, she would be at the side, inviting somebody to come toward her and ready to um, make a judgment on them. This character, our knight, is going in the same direction as the knight of wands. And so this guy's on the side, but he would normally be facing toward us, I believe. And these two would normally be facing toward us. Hmm. Onward we go. What we would expect in terms of the pedestal at this point, it's very well established in this deck that that's what's going to be holding up our item. Two of Pentacles, fairly traditional, but we've got those nets there. I like that the boats were preserved uh, because I think the boats can have their own significance, whether it's the size of them or their distance from the shore. The Three of Pentacles, fairly traditional, works for me. Although it is almost entirely planning, although he's doing some of the work, it's more drawing of plans instead of doing the actual physical craftsmanship end of it. But people who are into sacred geometry might be into that. Um, two, excuse me, what am I saying? Four of pentacles. Um, certainly the miserly aspect is preserved here <laughs> comically. Again, I, I do like the comic aspects of this. Lightens that up a little bit. Um, but again, I tend to miss the distribution of the pentacles that's in the Rider-Waite-Smith system, and I think that that does reduce the meaning of the card um, because I think that there is... Um, meaning behind the distribution of the pentacles in, in the guy that's in the Rider Waite Smith version. Five of Pentacles, yep. Pretty darn traditional there. Except that it is a guy, you know, an old man and a child. Oh, and he's got a kitty cat. Um or a kitty cat is watching. So I guess it's a complete gender reversal because I think it's a woman and uh, a younger, what looks like a younger man. And it would normally be, you know, so it's almost as though the, the, the young man on the crutches in 
or it's me, younger man on the crutches. In the Rider Waite, Smith has grown up and he's still on crutches and he's had a child and he's still in poverty. <laughs> um, because there's quite a role reversal here. Normally, the, the older adult would be female and she wouldn't have the crutches and the younger, shorter one would be somebody with crutches would be a male. So interesting decision. Uh, it doesn't change for me at this point. It doesn't change the meaning of the card. Six of Pentacles. Very traditional. But, 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 but. It's interesting that there's um, additional snow here. That the pentacles is becoming a snowy, and I think there's more of that. Well, maybe not. Uh, a bit of a snowy wintry um, suit. So you've got the balance up there. I don't know if this is supposed to be the child, that the child is continuing to collect. So there's just sort of the distribution here is it looks to me as though it's starting to, of the actual pentacles seen, the distribution seems to be getting off balance, but I mean, she clearly has more pentacles at home, right? And so whatever she's bringing here and whatever she provides to the people on the street, she clearly has no problem replenishing her supply. Seven of pentacles. This looks like he's got cabbages here too, or lettuce or something. So Mr. Happy Farmer. Again, kind of a great steampunkish kind of uh, contraption here in the Eight of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles, quite traditional, even if the bird is a little different. Nine of Pentacles, kind of a traditional old family photograph with everybody around the patriarch. Page of Pentacles. He does look a little greedy, doesn't he? <laughs> Um, and I don't know about this Knight of Pentacles. I don't think of the Knight of Pentacles like this at all. Of course, this is the Dark Mansion, so there's got to be some darkness here. But look at that evil Horus. <laughs> I mean, I think he's supposed to be a tax collector. That's my thinking. Um, I'm not sure if somebody else has another take on this character. Um, he does have a white collar, so I don't. Maybe he's the Spanish Inquisition. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's it's funny of all of the knights to make the Knight of Pentacles seem so sinister. Maybe somebody was tired of how dull he comes across, decided to give him a little bit of a flair. Queen of Pentacles with her bunny wabbit, and looks like she's got a a gem studded shawl or something. So very rich. This strikes me actually as a very Taurus-y sort of queen of pentacles. So she's still, she's pretty much looking directly at us and he's looking directly at us. So there's our very oddly austere looking um, King of Pentacles. I mean, he looks like maybe he deprives himself so that he can have more. Is that a form of stinginess? Like I want, I want to see my 
my riches pile up and so I I'm going to pinch pennies and I'm not going to eat any food so the king of cups looks away queen of cups looks at whoever is one place or another so she's looking at somebody this guy's kind of turned but he's also kind of looking at you in a severe way these are all pretty much looking directly at you so let's look at um, the knights because I don't think that we did get a balance of directions from the knights we've got one knight there And one right there, so they're both headed in this direction. And then one right there, again, all headed in the same direction, but the Knight of Cups is headed in the opposite direction. So, And the reason that I look at that sort of thing is because can these knights ever clash? The only knights that can clash are any of these knights with the Knight of Cups. Not a big deal, but something I sometimes look at. I don't even I don't look at it even all of the time. So now that I'm finished with that. Let me see how it shuffles for me. Me with my poor hands. Oh my goodness. All right, I can live with that. They feel quite stiff, but um, that's interesting. You know, and it's a fairly thick deck, but it does shuffle quite well. So, wow. I was not expecting that to be. It's stiff. They're not curving up very much, but they're not. And so that one didn't come. Wasn't quite as good. Um, but uh, yeah, better than expected. All right. So I know many people have already done walkthroughs, etc. But there's mine. There's my look at the dark mansion, and I will do a. A deck interview with it shortly and post it um, separately. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.